So we're going to bring out our brand presidents, and Adam's going to join us. We're going to start with Christine Duffy from Carnival Cruise Line. President, you get right here. And I might add, my dear friend, <laughs> Mr. Rick Sasso, President, MSC Cruises. Rick, your seat, sir. Thank you. And last but definitely not least, Andy Stewart, President and COO for Norwegian. Andy. All right. So before we start, I'm going to lay out the rules here. Um, we're going to invite those of you in the audience, as well as those that are viewing on, at home, to participate in today's panel. What I'm going to do is kick us off. You all know that you've given us some ideas, and we've gotten some ideas from our travel agent community. So we've got some questions. I'm going to go around and ask the group for their responses, and then we're going to go and see if we have some questions from the audience or from home. So uh, we should have, yes, if you'd like to be able to participate, if you want to submit questions to the panel, use either the Cruise360 app or Twitter, and just make sure to use hashtag Cruise360. All righty. So we'll try to get your questions incorporated. So I'm going to start actually with Christine. There was a lot of conversation about access earlier today, Wi-Fi, staying connected. We talk about technology, but we also talk about technology in, in really how do we help personalize and customize. So I know the Carnival is doing a lot. Talk to us about what you think for a travel agent. How do they? How do they take all these new assets, and how does that help them sell? So good afternoon, first of all, everyone. I, I do have to comment, though. You know, last year, we were pretty excited on this panel. We had three woman, women, and I think <laughs> one man, and I don't know what happened this year. <laughs> so, and congratulations to you, Cindy. Glad to, to see you uh, to up here and, uh, in your new role. Thank you. Um, so technology, I think Adam certainly talked about it in his keynote. What's really interesting to me is if you think back, you know, just three or four years ago, the conversation about technology as it related to cruise vacations was, isn't it great when you take your cruise that you can't be connected? And that everybody wanted to be disconnected and that was one of the big selling features. And I think it's amazing how quickly that position has changed, right. where today, even though you want to encourage people when they're taking a vacation to unplug from work, people still want to be connected. Social media and interaction has become just part of the way people live their lives. And I think we've seen that across all demographics. So it's not just millennials or younger crowd. I mean, people using Facebook and tweeting and chatting. And so we've developed a new app that we have on board our ship, uh, Hub app. We currently have it on uh, four ships. It'll be rolled out across the fleet that allows people uh, to sign up uh, very reasonably to have access to all of their social media when they're on, during their voyage. Um, we also uh, enable the app so that if you're traveling with a group of people, you can be texting and messaging with each other and sharing and you know, viewing all the things that, all that paper um, that we used to put into the cabins, <laughs> um, you can now just do on your app. Now I think we're in a period of time where we're sort of in transition, so you still may see a lot of paper, but we're also trying to move everybody over to technology. And uh, I think it'll, it won't take long before we see that happen. We've also introduced on our new ship, Carnival Vista, a new, uh, completely new photo experience where everything is digital. So no more are we putting all of the photographs right. that our photographers take on board on, on racks for you to try to find where your pictures are. Um, you actually uh, walk into an experience that looks a little bit like an Apple store, and we've got iPads and a facial recognition feature that people can opt into so that the system actually recognizes who you are and provides all of the photos for you to then choose from. You can decide to then purchase all of the digital photos we've taken, download them onto your phone, or have us print them for you. So those are just some of the examples. Thank you. It's very, very cool. Um, guests loved it when we, when we were on board. So those are some examples on, on shipboard for technology. I think the other bigger conversation, and, and Adam was alluding to this, is for all of us together, you know, we tend to think about what happens before someone goes on the cruise, 
what happens while I'm on the cruise, and then maybe we think about what happens after. I think the great opportunity that technology, and in particular social media and digital, gives us is to really begin to connect that whole guest experience from the front end when the agents are engaged with the guest, getting them to um, you know, pick a cruise vacation on the brand that's right for them and the experience they're looking for all the way through. And I think most importantly, that follow up when people get back to really make sure that we are all collectively holding on and owning that customer. So. so it's interesting that you talked about the photos. I was on a ship just a few weeks ago. I was amazed how full the photo gallery was. People were there throughout the day. So if you're thinking as a travel agent, this is your customer, I love the idea of before you're going and then afterwards, how do you maybe build a photo gallery for them? How do you extend their visit? I mean. It was amazing to me how often people were in that spot looking yeah. for their pictures. Mm -hmm. Now, Adam, I know at Royal there's been a lot of use of technology to do things a little bit differently to create kind of a, an exciting experience for the, for the uh, travelers. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an interesting proposition in the cruise industry because we've really made our mark as an industry on personal service. The service that the waiters deliver, the service that the stateroom attendants deliver, the service that the cruise staff delivers, and so on, is probably the main thing that's differentiated our industry over 50 years. So the challenge to us in the, this world of endless technology is how do you use the technology as an enabler so that you can create more options, more variety, more choice, but facilitate the personal service? Not get in the way of it, not undermine it, not replace it. And that's what we tried, especially with the Quantum Project. We really kind of challenged ourselves as a management team. How would we do that? How, wh where are the options around the experience that we could use technology as an enabler? And I would say we're all convinced that this is the beginning of the game. It's nowhere near the end of the game. Or maybe the game will never end now. Maybe the pace of change just goes faster and faster. And we all try to keep up where we can, lead where we might, and continue to use technology as an enabler. But we are very committed to never lose the personal service for which we are famous. So Adam, I'd like to stick with you for just a minute. Let's talk about multi-generational travel. A lot of conversation earlier today, and I know it's something that agents are focused on much, much more than they have been in before. So if I'm an agent, how do I, how do I actually take that and lead with it? What, from a cruise line perspective, helps them attract new customers, promote that type of cruise. And I'm going to tag one more question on. Are you doing anything different? And I actually would like this from the other, the other panelists as well. Are changes in either shore excursions or itineraries coming into play when you've got multi-generational um, vacationers? So we'll start with you, Adam. So yeah, so we, we've obviously been focused on this for quite a while. Our newer generations of ships certainly had multi-generational family travel in mind. Uh, to me, there's a couple ways to explain it. One of, first of all, for each generation of the family, grandparents, parents, children, their perception of the cruise environment is that the cruise was made for them. That's what the children think, that's what the parents think, that's what the grandparents think. Now they know intellectually that the other people from the other generations are around doing their thing, but there's just so much for them that it seems like it was made for them. And then there's what I call the accordion. The accordion to me is everybody comes together at dinner like when the accordion is compacted <laughs> and everybody talks about what they did during the day and what they're going to do tomorrow and what they're going to do tonight and then the accordion stretches out again and everybody goes back to doing their various things that are relevant for their age and it goes in and out over the course of the cruise. And all cruise lines as far as I'm concerned are magic when it comes to this. This is a truly inherent advantage that we have and so you see it in staterooms, you see it in entertainment options, you see it in shore excursions, you see it in the prevalence now of active opportunities. This is not, as you know, a, a sedentary thing anymore. If you want to be sedentary, great, be. But if you want to be active, there are no limits. And if you want to be crazy, go down the ultimate abyss on Harmony of the Seas. <laughs> Andy, Rick? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Adam's points. Um, multi-generational travel is, is made for cruising. Um, I, I did a trip with, my, with all my in-laws, <laughs> my sins, 
And the beauty of it was we didn't all have to get together for dinner sometimes. <laughs> we, I could send my mother-in-law off. Um, so I, I, I think that sense of flexibility is, is, um, is a really a huge positive, that families, they, they all think they want to be together all the time, but they actually get there and, and realize that some individual and separate space is, is a good thing. And plus, you know, the destinations, it, my kids really don't want to, if you're on a European trip, they don't want to be museums every day in every port. So the opportunity for someone to take the kids off to the beach while other members of the group go do, um, you know, some, uh, something that maybe the kids are not gonna want to do every day is a, just make this a, a fantastic um, opportunity for multi-generational travel. I really think we, the industry doesn't make enough of it because it's, uh, um, it, it's, it's tailor-made. Well, and I want to stick with you if I can for just a minute, Andy. There's been a lot of discussion of the concept of a ship within a ship, which is kind of what you're talking about. Um, but also, you all have announced um, some real new interesting ideas around the sweet life. Do you want to talk a little bit? And I actually see a question from our audience that says, are there plans to increase the number of occupancy, single occupancy rooms? Maybe you can touch on that for us a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a huge hit with single occupancy staterooms, uh, starting with Norwegian Epic, where we built a, um, a whole area of studio staterooms with a private um, lounge just for, for that segment of rooms in it. It was, it's been an absolute hit, been very, very popular. Um, we, we really focus on uh, talking about the solo traveler um, and, and how solo travelers can, can cruise in a very comfortable way. They're in this, this area where there's, there's private key card access. They can go to the lounge and in a very comfortable way. We're not trying to hook people up. This is not, <laughs> it's not a dating game. Um, I mean, you can if you want. Um, <laughs> But it, it's, it's really about solo travelers traveling in a comfortable way in an environment where they feel safe. And we have a whiteboard and somebody writes on the whiteboard, hey, having dinner in Cagnes this evening, if anybody wants to join me. And you know, people say, hey, we'd love to join you. So a very comfortable uh, way for solo travelers to go on a trip, feel safe, and feel that they're gonna be in an environment where they can meet people and, and really have a great trip. Um, we're gonna have it on every ship. We, we believe strongly in it but we're probably not going to expand it beyond where we are today. We're pretty comfortable with the number of rooms that we have, um, and it's working, pretty, it's working pretty effectively. So growing it, probably not, um, but sticking with it, absolutely. It's been very, very successful. So I'd like to hear from the other panelists, both if you have any plans to do anything similar, but also, you know, there are a very limited number of suites on the ships. Um, when people are traveling with their families, what are the new options to be able to accommodate these families that are traveling? Rick? Well, we, uh, I think a double cabin can always take a single, but a double cabin can't take six or ten people. So right. we've certainly also gone out in our next series of ships to create kind of enclaves of environments where you can have as many as ten people sharing some common space in a, in a configuration. And also the ship within the ship. If you, if you connect all the dots of everything that was just said, Everything about what we do as an industry and even independent companies looks at, at the dynamic of all of that because our yacht club is a ship within a ship. And that allows for family travel to have those different uh, aspirations. So the grandparents can be in the yacht club and the, the younger ones can be in more of the traditional cabins. Then you have all the children's programs that are, that are the facilities for children, the water parks, uh, six different classes of age groups where kids can have that, that experience and the adults can do what they want to do. So I think the way we built the hardware gives us the flexibility. The flexibility is really where I think we can talk to every one of your customers at one point in the conversation because all of these ships have that versatility. So the ship within a ship, the family travel, the kids programs, uh, cabins for 10 people. I mean, it is really a comprehensive execution that most of the lines have done. We've taken that, we offer children free, as an example. One of our attributes is kids sail free. So a family travel or people that have m multiple cabin needs, it also isn't gonna cost them a fortune. And then when you really look at the technology as a, a comment that I wanted to make on the earlier question, 
We've also made it affordable. If you go back a number of years, it was quite expensive to make a phone call from a ship. And using the internet or finding Wi-Fi throughout a ship was almost impossible. But now not only do you have all that access, but we've also made it very affordable. We've just announced the packages that are $30 for a whole week to be connected. So I think we've, as an industry, taken this forward look that Adam talked about in his comments. We're looking forward as an industry, and I think we've all taken whatever we think is the, is the main pieces of that that can help them address every customer that walks in their office. So what I keep hearing, we talk about customization, but it really has to be about flexibility, providing different options, new innovation. So I want to stick with customization and kind of maybe the, the multi-generational multi families. More and more people are actually staying on the ships when they get into port. The ships are becoming more and more of destinations. They have such amazing amenities and attractions. But I also read so many new destinations, new islands. So. Christine, I know that you are you, and I think uh, Rick both talk a little bit about some. Why are we why are we buying new islands? Why do we feel like we need to build a new destination? Well, I think for us at Carnival, and I'll I'll touch on multi generational because I've started saying you know Carnival is like America's cruise line. We have 14 home ports. 50 percent of the U.S. population can drive to a Carnival cruise vacation in six hours or less. So when you think about a family traveling maybe with 10 people or grandparents and kids and grandkids, not having to pay for airline tickets and even for people who can afford the airline tickets, the hassle that air travel has become, um, you know, it's been all over the news the past two weeks about, you know, TSA and security lines. So this ability for us to be able to get families on board um, efficiently, very cost effectively, and then I think on the experience side, as, as we've all done uh, as an industry, I think just focusing on what are the needs of our guests, because we all have you know different guests, and some of it does depend on where is the the cruise sailing to, what is that itinerary, uh, you know, just coming back from delivery of Carnival Vista in our inaugural cruise. I mean, we sail seven hundred thousand kids with Carnival every year. Um, the number of children on the, the Vista inaugural was much lower than what we're going to see when that ship uh, makes her way back to the U.S. because every day was a different port. Uh, and I think mm. if you're looking for that experience, then the destination still is incredibly important. I think when we're sailing in the Caribbean and we've seen from all of, uh, of brands, Creating private destinations or having a private island is very, very popular with guests. I mean, where we really can create an experience that's much more customized to what our guests want to see. Um, we just announced recently for Cozumel, Cozumel Plus, because we were finding that with people who repeat cruise, Cozumel is not a brand new destination. People have been there over and over, and the ship, you know, people wanted to stay longer. Um, there's some great attractions if you have eight or nine hours in port that you can't do if you only have four or five hours. Mm -hmm. So I think we're all you know, very focused on how do you continue to innovate even around things that like Caribbean cruising that we've been all doing for years. So I think that's where you see the focus on private islands, um, expansion and investment and putting infrastructure in place in existing destinations to provide unique features. So for people who have cruised a lot, it's still fresh and new. I agree with you, even I have to say, you know, being on Vista was amazing. And there were days where, you know, you want to go off the ship and see a great European port, um, but, you know, so I think people are torn sometimes right, because the right. ships have become uh, so, there's so much to do on the ship. And I think there is no better vacation for, uh, for a family. And I, I think that's really one of the big advantages of uh, for our agents to be able to sell a cruise vacation to somebody who is traveling with generations of family. Rick, a, did you want to add something? Yeah, because there, there's a bigger picture to it for all of us. And that picture is we compete with one another. But our biggest competitor is somebody who's not taken a cruise. Exactly. A land-based guest who needs to jump the fence and become a first-time cruiser. 
And the same challenge for us is to make sure our current guests are very happy, the ones that have been on 20 or 50 cruises. So that dynamic requires us to be evolving. It requires us to look at the customer who's been and says, this is great, and make sure we can create an environment to, to give that to people who haven't even tried it. The Out Island uh, phenomena in the last 20 years, that is what you read in the common forms almost every time a cruise comes back and they say, oh, that Out Island experience. So we're investing several hundred million dollars just here in the Caribbean for Ocean K Marine Reserve. We just announced yesterday we're building an Out Island experience in Abu Dhabi, oh, in wow. the Emirates. So you can see that that kind of piece is what I think attracts our guests that already are familiar with cruising, but also may entice people who've never decided to make that choice yet. So those options are what I think the evolution, we need to be nimble. Our industry needs to keep reinventing. We need to make Cozumel a more exciting port. We need to make the Out Islands more accessible and give them more variety. So our goal is as MSC to extend the ship to the Out Island. Right. That everything that happens there can happen from the ship. Entertainment, all the things that go on that people expect from us, we want them to have it on the shore too. And even Ocean K, we're going to stay there until midnight. So people will have this experience while the sh instead of sailing in the middle of the ocean at night, we have a facility that will allow people to also interact with the, with the shore experience. So it's really the way we've all evolved to get those first timers and also to satisfy our current guests. Well, and I really, I appreciate what Christine said. So if we're, we're, we've got a customer that we've worked with and maybe they've gone to the Caribbean a few times, they've got the convenience, they'd like to take a cruise, but they kind of think they've been there and done that. You're giving them a whole new experience. And I, I also like, Christine, the point of thinking about Where's your customer coming from? How can you get that first time cruiser? Perhaps they don't have to take a flight to get to a cruise. So Andy, I want to come to you because we're, we've got a question here that talks about, oh, actually they switched the question. There was a question a minute ago, which we're going to go back to, that talks about pricing and all inclusive. And you know, it's funny, we had a conversation this morning with some of the travel agency leaner, leaders and the, the cruise leaders. Years ago, everybody thought it's all free on a cruise line then we want to be flexible, we want to be customized, so we let people kind of pick and choose. Then they feel like, wow, not everything's included anymore. Mm -hmm. So what's your view on pricing? Is it going to be all-inclusive? Are we going to stay kind of a menu option? What do you think? What are you seeing? Well, j just before I go there, I just want to, just want to touch on the island thing. I think, we're, I think we're so used to having private islands that we forget how sexy it is. It's a private island, nobody lives there. It's this beautiful destination in the middle of nowhere. And we're sort of blase, oh yeah, we've all got private islands. Like, <laughs> who cares? It's, it's a big deal. Who gets to go to an island when nobody lives there? So I, I, I think the whole island thing is a, is a big deal. We're putting a lot of money into two islands. And I, and I think as a, as a group, we could make more of it. I think it's a great way of bringing people in. When are you ever gonna go to an uninhabited island? It's, it's a pretty exciting deal. And the money that's going in all of them is really, I think, um, delivering an experience that's going to be the best experience almost of anywhere anyone's going to go. And I, I think we've become, yeah, it's just another island. It's not just another island. These places are incredible. How much flexibility, I want to throw this out to the group, we have seen more and more people interested in at least considering doing an event on a ship. Or we've got family reunions. We have lots of different special occasions. How much flexibility is there around building your own activity if you're on your private island? I mean, there's a lot. We've, we've, and we, just, we had a press conference this morning actually talking about the investment in Great Stirrup Quay. And we've actually uh, designed this area on the island. Um, it's, it's a lagoon and it's going to be a really upscale area with villas, one, two studios, one, two bedrooms. But we've also put a, um, a private room there for exactly that, for events. Uh, up to 75 people, so nice. travel agency groups, uh, can come and we can really customize something very special in this upscale lagoon um, to deliver a unique experience to a group. And then there's the whole island. I mean, it's, a, it's hundreds of acres, um, so there's all sorts of opportunities um, to deliver unique experiences. We've had, you know, we've done a Kid Rock concert on the beach. Um, we've, uh, we've done all sorts of things. Uh, we've done one of those crazy races where you leap over things and fall off things. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Ninja, ninja. ninja. Well, what, one of those things, like, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can, I mean, you, you, you can do anything. 
Um, you take the whole ship, you really can do anything that's legal. Um, <laughs> and um, so it's, I, think it's a, I think it's something very exciting. And sometimes, because we're all in the industry and we all talk about it all the time, we forget how cool it is. Um, anyway, you asked me a question. So we'll go back to pricing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go He's back so to pricing. Smooth. I'm sorry. He's so um, smooth. I'm, ex I'm excited where the industry is headed. Uh, I think this concept of talking more about value and less about price is a good thing for all of us. Um, if, if we just talk about price, we all end up at the lowest common denominator. And I think that's a bad place for us. It's a bad place for all of you. It means lower commissions, and that's, that's a, a bad thing. So I think a trend towards talking about value, and our approach has been to include more stuff, um, give choices. Uh, the beverage package is, is clearly the one that's just, just been so popular, resonated with um, customers. Um, and I think that concept is, is here to stay. Uh, it, it, it works well. I think it, I think it helps uh, all of you enormously. Um, because when there's a choice to make, they need someone to help them make the choice. And so I, I think uh, the way we're talking about value, the way we're offering a promotion where there's a choice, I think that's absolutely in your sweet spot. And it, it, uh, it's going to mean higher pricing, uh, which is a good thing for, uh, for everyone. But it's going to mean a more inclusive product, which is a good thing too. So I, this is you know, where I get into what I, I, I call this, this triangle of happiness, where the customer's happy, the travel agent's happy, and the cruise line's happy. Um, and it's, it's this wonderful symbiotic relationship where, where things should just go from strength to strength. So I, li I like it uh, as a brand. We think, it's a, uh, we think it's a great thing. We think it's here to stay. And um, I really encourage you to support it um, because the one thing I think together we could do a better job is, is present it better. I think we could tell the story more effectively. Uh, we still have people who don't know uh, they've made a cho they don't make a choice. They don't pick anything. And there's, there's, you know, there's very valuable beverage packages, and they haven't picked anything because nobody told them. And that breaks my heart. When we have that, it's like, I just know there was more demand there if together we had, had done a better job. And that's down to us, and, and I, I put some of the responsibility on all, all of you to help us tell this story in a more compelling way. Well, doesn't that go back to the comment this morning is make sure, and I think Adam touched on it in his comments, you need to understand why people are traveling in the first place. What are they looking for? What's the experience they want? And rather than them design it, we've got all the information. If we ask the right questions, we can design that once in a lifetime experience. That's exactly, I mean, I was talking this morning to someone about you know, the, the opportunity to ask questions. And you know, lots of people don't drink, so there's a dining package. There, there are right. food is a dining package. People just love to see everything ashore. There's, there's the Shurex um, credit. So there really is something for it. We're not saying it's a one size fits all. We're saying, hey, understand your customer, ask great questions and then present the value. And hopefully the very last question anyone asks is, oh, by the way, how much is it? And if right. we can do that, if we can have everyone excited, <laughs> and oh, by the way, how much is it? I, I think we've all won. Yeah. Perfect. So there's a really good question that's come from the audience. Um, we've talked a lot about the ship as a destination, and there's often not enough time if you are in port to really experience it. And we've seen some of the lines coming out with overnight stays. Adam, I'm going to start down with you, but I'd really like to hear from all of our panelists. Do you think we're going to see more, more overnight stays in port? Well, it certainly has an important role to play in the industry. And of course, within the context of our company, Azamar Club Cruises has really gone hard that way. To, to do overnight cruises, to do night touring, do longer stays is sort of fundamental to what that brand means. Now, there, there are trade-offs, and I think what's important in the big picture of the industry is that all the choices should be there for the customer. This brand does this this way, that brand does that that way. What do you as a customer want to buy? What would be valuable to you? So there are people who want to collect more ports. <laughs> so if, let's say within, within a one week time span, if you start to stay overnight in places, you're suddenly bringing a seven night cruise down to one or two ports. Good point. That's not normally a very attractive thing. When you have people who can go over one week, two weeks, even pushing three weeks, and you can inject certain overnight stops at marquee destinations into that big program, it's fantastic. But not everybody can take two or three week cruise vacations. Correct. So I think what you see is we have enough brands in the industry and enough choices for the customer to have this be a part of it, but not so much for the lines that do three, four, and seven night cruises, because it's very difficult to do that, but more past a week. Rick? On the, on the European, uh, uh, look, 
a European cruise on MSC, you can board that same ship in Barcelona or in Genoa or in Rome or in Naples. And if you want to do more of Spain, you do it before or after the cruise. If you want to do more of Italy, you do it before or after the cruise. So those are the way we organize overnight stays. They're pre and post packages. And it is difficult to say, should I stay an overnight here and then I can't add that destination. So seven days you can only do so much, and even in the Mediterranean. Most people choose European cruises because of the itinerary. A little different in the Caribbean where they're choosing more of the ship and, the, and just a relaxing experience. But we have a combination of that by, by virtue of having multiple port embarkations. So you can take this right. wonderful seven day experience and get France, Italy, Spain. Uh, um, I mean, we do it every week. Mm -hmm. So we give people that option to make those extra stays more important to their need at Italy, Spain, France, and so on. So staying with this for just a minute, there's another question that came up that's along this line and I find it very interesting. Mm -hmm says some hotel groups are actively bypassing travel agents. Why are we so important to the cruise lines? So I think of, to the point you make, the opportunity to work with hotels to create land and cruise packages. That's certainly one opportunity, but I'll put this out to the group, anyone who might well, want to take this. I, I mean, I think we've seen, um, I think hotels are being short-sighted. Mm -hmm. I think the big difference is hotels, unlike cruise lines, are not only reliant on leisure travel. Right. So there's a huge business travel, transient travel business that the hotels operate. Um, and I think, you know, similar to the airlines, where their business is much broader than leisure. In the cruise industry, we are primarily a leisure vacation experience. And given, as we've all talked about, the number of cruise brands that are out there, the number of options even within brands based on different classes of ships, different itineraries. I think we've all said that a travel agent is the best resource, not only for us and the, and the guest and the customer, um, to really help people navigate to make sure that they get on the right cruise for them based on what they want to do for their vacation. As Adam said, you know, that... We, we are always going to promote our brand and everything that we believe is great about our brand. But the agent, if I'm a, I, if I'm a consumer, um, the agent is the objective party. And really, if you build the relationship with the customer, um, I, I think that's where we make sure we, we really deliver the best experience. I think on the hotel side, I think we will probably see uh, they might pivot a bit around leisure travel. I actually think hotels are struggling with how do we continue to rely and work with travel agent as partners on the leisure business, even if they don't believe that they need travel agents as much for, their, for, their, for the other segments of the business. Well, I think, Rick, you said it really well. If you look at the value of a travel agent, you want to create an experience before they get on the ship and after the ship. So that means as travel professionals, we need to understand which hotels are good partners, compliments. You need to know the destination, be able to sell the entire experience. And that's hard. I mean, I think that's a real challenge. And I don't know that we have those real strong partnerships. If, and because I've got the hotel background, I think of brands that are on land that I would say equate to some of the brands that we have on the water. But that's a lot of information for the travel agents to know, but certainly would be a differentiator. Adam. Well, I would add a couple of comments. I think from the point of view of especially the larger hotel companies, they're dealing at a level of volume that is beyond us. Right. When they look, like we're proud of ourselves because we have 24 million yeah. cruisers this right. year. Yeah. We're 2%. <laughs> that doesn't even catch their attention. Yes. yes. They're dealing in such millions of customers. Right. But the other thing I would say, if, I can say this because this is like the Cruz family here. <laughs> There's more at stake with us. There's more at stake for the customer in their choice of a cruise. Right. And that's where they need travel professionals to help them make that choice. The, because their choice of a cruise is going to influence the central memories of their lives. Absolutely. Only rarely would a hotel fall into the same category Correct. of importance, risk, or uncertainty. Good point. And so customers are more comfortable, I would say, especially after about 20 years of the internet, or 25 years, of taking that matter into their own hands. 
they're not comfortable to take this matter into their own hands, nor should they be. They right. need your help. Excellent point. And typically the engagement, because of the number of crew or staff we have on cruise ships, yeah. proportionate to the number of passengers, a hotel doesn't compete with that. They can't afford to. Your cabin steward is your butler, your, your assistant for a whole seven days. You hardly ever see the maid in the hallway in a hotel. <laughs> I mean, so the whole infrastructure of cruising does allow us to engage closer to the guests than any hotel could ever do, even a Ritz-Carlton. Cruise ships have that ability because of the number of attention to the, the connection to the guest. So we do it. And I just one other point, because hotels are available every night of the week at any number of segments, two nights, five nights, 12 nights, start on a Tuesday. Our industry some years ago basically had one, I, I would call it confined restriction. Usually a seven day cruise sailed on a Saturday or a Sunday and a four night cruise sailed on a Monday. And in the last 10 or 20 years, you can take a cruise three nights, four, five, six, eight, seven, ten, you name it, almost sailing any day of the week. So our commodity has also become very accessible in terms of how our inventory is sold. And I think it's because of the growth of all these brands doing this, making it so much more available at the time and the choice of what you want. And hotels have always had that. You can pick a hotel room and stay as many nights as you want whenever. Right. Cruise ships now basically have that competitive advantage that we didn't have 20 years ago. But we haven't lost the ability to be personalized, customized, more intimate, higher level of service regardless of what ship you're on, regardless of what brand you're on, it is more well, personalized experience. Well, just think of experience. how many people you get greeted by when you walk on a cruise ship right. before you even get to your stateroom. Right. That didn't happen in a, the last right. hotel I well, stayed I, at. And I think that the, diff, the big <laughs> difference is when you book a hotel, you're booking a place to sleep. Unless you're, you're going building, to an all-inclusive right. resort somewhere, um, you're, that's where I'm sleeping, but I'm going to Charleston or I'm going to New York and so the experience is where I'm going it's not necessarily just the place the, the hotel and I think for people who choose you choose a cruise vacation I just think it's it's a very different thing which is why as we've said you really for people who have not cruised before when we talk about cruise rookies or first to cruise it, it really is hard for people to get their heads around it and again why we need travel agents um, in a, in a, and the relationship is much different between agents and the cruise industry than I think it ever will be for hotels. The other, well, the other last point, sorry, just not to be redundant, because I, I agree with all of that, is why we need you guys. The, the reach you have is beyond anything we could achieve. When I think of all the different themes of groups I've seen over the years that A, would never have occurred to us, and B, even if it had occurred to us, we would not have been able to find them. You're living in a community, you're amidst people, and you're coming up with unbelievable ideas for theming groups that would just never occur to us, whether it's scrapbooking or polka dancing or, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, other crazy things that may or may not be legal. Um, we've, we've seen every kind of group, and there's no way, way on earth we would, we would be able to reach people in that way or stimulate people to go on a cruise. Um, as, as the brand, we, it, it's absolutely essential. Uh, your reach is beyond anything we could achieve um, any other way. Well said, well said. We are running out of time, and I want to give each one of our panelists just a minute to kind of, what's the one tidbit you'd like our community to walk away from today's discussion? Adam, do you want to start? I already had 20 minutes to do that. Yeah, he's talked enough. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> do it again. You've already given them your yeah, time. <laughs> Touche. Now, the only thing I want to say is that Andy's not the only one who has challenges with his in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> that's a secret. I know your wife, you know my wife, so we're going to keep that a secret between us. OK, and I promise I not to tell Cheryl that you said that. <laughs> well, this is going that out on the air anyway. So we're well, live. <laughs> Cheryl, did you hear that? <laughs> she may be watching. <laughs> I, I, I defer. That's from home. <laughs> well, I believe we've heard his comment. Yours, Andy? <laughs> so I was, on, I was on a treadmill yesterday, and I was watching CNBC. And one of the, I don't watch much television, but I was, I was watching CNBC, and Jim Cramer finished, and then the new show started. And it was a guy evaluating somebody's business, and it was a dog food business. 
Um, and I sort of got into it. I, I didn't expect it, but I sort of got into it. Um, I, don't, I don't, yeah, I don't have a dog. Um, anyway, but I sort of got into it because the guy coming in to evaluate the business was, he was sort of walking around and saying, why is your stock room such a mess? And like, eh, we haven't had time to tidy it up. And he sort of asked a bunch of questions that seemed really simple. And the owner of the business really had no good answer. Oh. And, it, and it was, it sort of struck home to me that, that sometimes in front of your eyes are things that could really help your business. Mm -hmm. And they're really simple things. And, if, and it sh you shouldn't need someone from a TV show to come with a bunch of cameras to ask questions that are gonna help your business. And it, it all seems so simple, but the, the, the owners of this business were like, wow, I should tidy up the stock room, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have so much stock, yeah. And it was, so it was interesting, but I think all of us, if we had some outside eyes come and look at our business, they would find things that are simple and easy to fix that would make us better. And if we all went back to our businesses tomorrow and looked with fresh eyes at what we were all doing, I think we'd all be a little better. So if everyone went back and, and proactively did something from this conference, A, maybe taking some of the words of wisdom, maybe, from this group, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, but B, really sort of looking at your business and thinking about some of the simple things you could do to make it a little better, I think we'd all, I think we'd all be in, in a better place uh, at the end of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. My dog food story. Mine would kind of piggyback on what Adam did earlier before we Do you have trouble with your in-laws? <laughs> 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 but Adam spent a considerable amount of time trying to put a perspective to you on how you should see yourself, not how you should see us, how you should see yourself. And it kind of piggybacks also to what Andy just said. So I'll say it real quickly. Knowledge, and again, to what Adam was trying to make a highlight, knowledge and commitment. You guys have the tougher job than even we do. Why? I only have to know everything there is to know about MSC, and that's a lot. And I'm expecting you to try and help us for you to know everything there is to know about MSC. And then you have to know about 20 some odd other brands and all the details and who's got what islands and who's doing what for whom. So you guys have, you have to challenge yourself to make sure you become the most knowledgeable expert in your field, which is our business. And you have to do that with a commitment and use the clear assets for that. Use the, the technology that we have as, as clear so you can learn and the education online. Use the cruise line assets the MSC agent website that you can find out more about us. So when you have nothing to do, spend a few minutes on each one of our websites and learn a little more about what we do. And why is it important? Because I promise you two things. One, if you become an expert, you will close more sales than you currently do today. I don't care how great a salesperson you are, but if you have knowledge and you can express that to somebody who doesn't have it, you're gonna close a higher ratio of the current leads you already work on. And the second thing is you'll become the expert. People will gravitate to you. Word of mouth, oh, by the way, I just dealt with such and such travel and they really turned me on to a great cruise experience. And you may get more customers from that. And the last and the most important that you should not worry about, you will never be trumped by technology, never. I don't care how much there could be more satellites up there tomorrow giving us more applications and more uh, uh, connectivity and more all the stuff that we know is going on around us. But I don't care how better that gets in the next 10 years, it still won't trump you because you are the one who is going to end up closing the sale with the right kind of expertise. So I just encourage you to become more knowledgeable like attending these conferences and learn a lot more about what we have so you can communicate it for us. Thank you. Thank you. Christine, bring do, us do home. Do you have a different question for me? <laughs> <laughs> bring us home. You know, you know, it's funny because one of the questions that we were told Cindy was going to ask, and I guess we've run out of time, yeah. is that if we weren't doing the job we're doing right now, what job would we want? And I have to say, I really have, I, I, I kept thinking about, well, what is it that I would want to do? Right. But um, yesterday we had the opportunity, we have the Carnival sales team here for our uh, mid-sales meeting. 
And we had uh, and we had some folks from uh, uh, Expedia cruise ship centers come in and talk to the group. And you know, I, I really got pumped up about the opportunity that I think agents have today. And while there have been a lot of struggles and there's been a lot of brouhaha of this technology takeover and our agents, I, I really think when you look at just the cruise industry, I mean, forget all the other vacations out there. You know, as Adam said, when you think about where we are as an industry today and, and what the future holds, I, I really think being a tra in, in a business where you're an agent, you are creating memories and experiences for people that make a difference in their lives. And that is not something that everybody that wakes up in the morning can say that they do. And I think we all recognize, you know, being here, um, we are blessed to be in, I think, the best industry there is in the world. I think that we have come such a long way. And, you know, the future is bright. And for those of you that are here in this room, I will say, obviously, you are already committed. Um, you, you're part of CLIA, you're part of an association that is focused on you. You have people from all of the cruise lines who are really here, active, interested in hearing what you have to say, what your ideas are. I completely agree with Rick that as much as we are all gonna invest in technology and digital and whatever that, wherever that takes us, nothing replaces people to people communication and relationships. So I think that's what we're all doing here today uh, yep. and for the next couple of days, learning from each other. So just say thank you for all your support on behalf of Carnival and all of our Carnival brands that are, that are here. Thank you and um, look forward to uh, seeing uh, many of you uh, over the next couple of days at this great conference. Excellent. Well, we are clearly out of time, but I do want to thank you. You all have been so much fun. Thank you. Let's all give our panelists a warm round of applause. Thank you.